Welcome to another episode of Tap Calf Transmissions Stream. Welcome to another episode of Tap Calf Transmissions. Uh, I think we're live. Yep, looks like it. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tap Calf Transmissions. My name is Justin, joined as always by my good friend Corey. And we've got a very special episode planned today because not only are we five minutes late <laughs> starting the recording, but uh, we don't have anything planned. So we were thinking we would just kind of do a news update video, a uh, bit of Q&A, and just kind of chat for a while. To be fair, we did, uh, we did decide that a few days ago, so it's not like we just decided five minutes beforehand that we didn't have time to read a comic or something. Because <laughs> uh, we, we did make this decision when we still had time to read a Young Jedi Knight. Or, uh, I mean, yeah, as long as we make it like before five minutes before the episode, we've got time. That's true. To, uh... we, could really, we could really just pull out uh, either of those things right now and read them on the podcast. <laughs> it, would be, it would work out just fine. Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, though, it's April Fool's. Did you get uh, made a fool by anything? Anything really good get you? No, I've just uh, I've just ignored any news today other than stuff that I've posted myself, mm -hmm. which has all been correct. And mm -hmm. uh, I did see that you fired our good friend, uh, <laughs> our former friend, Charlie. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, I fired him from the friend role long before I fired him from the job role. Yeah, but, it, um, it's it is kind of weird when you have these kind of like YouTube relationships and friendships mm -hmm. that you kind of have to like from the business side, keep up, even if the. The fire and passion is long since drained from mm -hmm. that. So, loveless marriage, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, did you see Alex's Star Wars Explains? His was really good. Hey, well, no, you said he, you weren't. Yeah. It's not a joke. Like, mm -hmm. the man just wants to be in the movie. <laughs> no, he does, and he was saying he's been telling me for a long time he wants to do more. Um, wants to do more like get stuff. So I think this yeah. was his opportunity. He's just taking it. Well, he's like, really into uh, into improv, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's like how Charlie, to go back to our friend Charlie, like he jumped at that opportunity to wear that Princess Peach outfit. Yeah. Like a little too excited for it just to be something he's being forced to do. It kind of like that. Like I was like, oh, I guess I'll make a skit this year. <laughs> well, did you watch uh, Templin Institute's April Fool's video yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So... Mark initially asked me and Charlie to do something for it, as you're aware. Uh, mm -hmm. We tried. I tried. Charlie immediately, as, as soon as we tried to do, like, it's supposed to be like a scripted thing, mm -hmm. and or like a made-up joke in the moment that is an obvious joke, and as soon as we started recording, Charlie would just laugh and say he couldn't do it, it's... He couldn't handle the cringe, which it's Charlie. Of course he mm -hmm. can handle the cringe. He is just cringe. Mm -hmm. But he then tries to send Mark a video that we'd posted on X2 a year ago. So I had to record some stuff for Mark on my own, knowing that Charlie would be unable to do this. And mm -hmm. Mark still didn't even use it. So um, they're both dead Kings to me. and Generals is in the chat, and he his was my favorite. Um, his was like the I great... I seen his yet. Oh, no, in, Mar in Mark's video. Oh, I mean... Okay. His was like the great Pepsi war and it was like, uh, I forget what he named the guy, the, the, like the, like the Duke of Gatorade or whatever. It was really <laughs> funny. Like the great cola wars. Um, that was good. Uh, I, I will say I got bamboozled yesterday because I wasn't expecting it by, um, a, a halo infinite delay thing. It was, it was basically just like the exact same as the last halo infinite delay twit, uh, tweet, but it was like till, spring of 2022 hmm. and i was like okay that's really believable but yeah you can't if you're like a actually announcing something or actually making something you can't do something that is just completely in line with literally everything you've ever done that's... yes the, yeah there's two ways to do a bad april fools that's one of them the other is to do something that people unironically want like i remember i used to be on the sim the sims uh Sim City, sorry, Sim City modding boards. Right. Because I used to love that game. And one April Fool's, their joke was, oh, we've, all the artists have come together and agreed to allow all their stuff to be downloaded together. And it's going to make modding way easier. And that didn't happen. So it's like, now it just kind of looks bad. And it's like drawing yeah. light at the fact that how like annoying this service is. Yeah, like 
we announced things that for uh, for Thrawn's Revenge, we announced things that people would want, but we actually do the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, this is your third Thrawn's Revenge one, right? Uh, yeah, because like Cause we did two Revan's Revan... Revenge ones, and uh, like was we it did... FOTR start? Didn't that start off as one? Or yeah, no? twenty seventeen yeah. was the first time we did kind of the April Fools mod announcements, and that was followed. Oh, the and Republic. you did the Vong one as well. As yeah, Fools, that was uh, that was twenty nineteen, and that was when and that was going to be like its own mod rather than roll into <clears> Thrawn's <throat> Revenge, but mm-hmm. it were it ended up. It's not a lie. It's just a reorganization there. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it all worked mm-hmm. out. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I saw any other good ones. I don't know. I enjoy that. Some people get like, some people really hate it, but yeah, I'm into yeah. it. As long as it's clear when things are jokes, that's fine. There's always going to be someone mm-hmm. who believes like even the most clearly stated joke is real. But mm-hmm. as long as there's some way to distinguish between the that and what's actually happening mm-hmm. and i'm okay with it yeah yeah um it, it, it is just i guess mostly when people uh when people get their hopes up and then you know that's the only thing yeah anything else though uh well, let's talk about bad batch because that was the other big thing i guess since last week there's a trailer for bad batch we knew it was about time because it's coming out just over a month uh from today may 4th um so yeah, thoughts on thoughts on the trailer, real quick. Uh, I thought it was a cool trailer, but like my thoughts overall on the show are still kind of where they've been since it was announced. Where uh, like it looks good for what it is, but I'm still not sure how I'm gonna feel about it because it's uh, it is like Star Wars A Team basically, and mm-hmm. that's not my favorite genre. Mm-hmm. So it could be good though. Yeah, like like I I think that's kind of a benefit. Like. Because the characters are so cut and dry, it gives them, or so, like, stereotypical, it gives them a lot of room to, you know, grow. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'll dislike it, but it's not, uh, in that whole slate of things to look forward to, it's not really what I'm looking forward to. And I'm glad that we are in a position where we're getting enough that that isn't a problem. Like, Mm -hmm. if you don't like that, there's going to be 37 Mm -hmm. other shows that that are coming right afterwards. Mm -hmm. And we'll maybe uh, re-inject some interest in Star Wars videos so that we can stay employed. Yeah, because so I talked about that this week too mm-hmm. about how like Star Wars feels a little dead right now. Saying it's it's been it's not dead. It, it feels a little dead because there's the interest is just waning, and like we're not experts in fandom, but you know, fandom kind of like affects our YouTube channels because right. like, we see directly like, okay. Cause our, our, you know, our channels rise and fall with like the, the general interest. Yeah. Um, that's just how YouTube works. Um, like I explained it. Some people don't realize this, but like when star Wars is popular, like in, in December when like the Mandalorian's on our channels generally just do better, not just Mandalorian videos, but any video. Yeah. Um, so when things are, you know, you know, less so then, it's clear to us. Yeah, like there are uh, there are certain things for me that'll just do well regardless that kind of creates its own interest. But in general, Star Wars stuff is really reliant on what's kind of out there at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but it, it will be it will be better. And then what else do we actually have this year coming out? Is Visions this year? Uh, Ronan, well, I think, is this year. Well, there's, I well, guess it's going to be a week of Mandalorian. Year, it's uh, Boba Fett this year, but Mandalorian right, next yeah. year, I think. Yeah. Same thing. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, there's basically the first episode of Bad Batch is what, 70 minutes. So it's basically a Star mm-hmm. Wars movie. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like the, what they with the Clone Wars, which has me excited. Yeah. So I guess for that one, we'll just do a full a full podcast on the premiere, at least. We were mm-hmm. talking before about whether we wanted to do like uh, do an episode that's like 30 minutes on each one and then alternate that with uh, or throw in an extra episode once a month or something for books while it's on. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's probably what we're going to end up doing. But we got a lot to cover in that first one, probably. So, yeah, speaking of they did also just announce I saw this on Twitter before I before I came on. Not on Star Wars leak, but Del Rey did announce book three of uh, 
the new Thrawn trilogy. Uh, Del Rey, Star Wars, Twitter, just one second. Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy continues, continues later this month with greater good. Uh, the finale of the trilogy is coming sooner than you think. Book three, Lesser Evil by Timothy Zahn, November 16th, 2021. Sounds good. So... Yeah, very soon. That's like a classic Legends release schedule where like, yeah. they knock a trilogy out in a year and a half. We'll try our best to cover those when they actually mm-hmm. come out uh, and not take the month off afterwards. But listen, buddy, I had space sickness. <laughs> mm-hmm. How'd you get that? Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, just trying to think if there's anything Way the space else. Space elevator, boys. Way the space elevator. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Oh, did you like my uh, Randy inclusion yeah. in today's video? Warlord uh, Zinge? Originally, the Warlord Zinge thing was just, like, going to be a joke. Like, I was just going to list off three people and then Warlord Zinge. Um, but then I was like, I looked over and I saw the Trailer Park Boys poster I got in my office. Well, it's on my floor now. A little waiting to be hung. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, what's it called? Um, um... It's a, it was a poster, but I took it to the premiere of the first Trailer Park Boys movie, and they all signed it. So now it's mounted. But um, I think it's, it must be in the hallway now, because it's not near. But um, I was like, oh, Randy. Randy kind of is also Zinge-like, so. Yeah, I, I told you in DMs, but I, I do think you uh, you neglected the Horngus in that video a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It's a hard topic to penetrate, but you just got to get like right in there. <laughs> Initially, I wanted to get wasted to do it just because he's got like such a beautiful, like, in, like instructor's voice, like, and mm-hmm. he's so proper sounding. If he tries to be, like, it would have been hilarious to hear him <laughs> saying Horngus and Skungle and stuff. But you can see that I if think... you just go to the Star Wars Squadron subreddit. Mm-hmm. That's true. Do you think we're going to uh, get any more Star Wars games announced this year while we're on the. Mm. we're not so, gonna get a star wars game this year but we could get we could get no. some announcements there's been the rumor that either dice or somebody else is working on a triple or sorry a double a like squadron size game i've heard that from a few reliable people and then also charlie said it which kind of makes me question it but um i'd say we might get that announced and i think we'll get the full like this probably doesn't count because it's already been announced but we'll get more stuff for jedi fallen order too yeah. yeah, I I really thought that would actually be announced by now. But yeah, me too. Because it's basically it's been, been a, a it's known been officially thing. announced, I think, but I don't think like it has a name or a date yet. But yeah, it's been announced. It's been announced mostly through like job postings, right? I thought EA formally announced it. Um, uh, well, I guess considering order. how the original Fallen Order was actually announced, it. it Shouldn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, it was it's... announced as the first episode in a series. Oh my god, Wikipedia is really bright. It was announced as the first episode in a series, uh, first uh, mo- uh, game in a series. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, I mean, even just the uh, the initial announcement of Fallen Order, where it was like an offhand mention about it's like that weird audience interaction thing. Mm-hmm. There. So, yeah, I was with <laughs> I was with Jay, like the who's EA's community manager. When they were doing it, it was like I was like, "Oh my god! Like, what are you guys doing?" <laughs> like, it was it was so bad. Like, and it, it's funny because it was such a good such a good game, but like, you could tell they were putting some stuff together last minute. Like, I don't know if yeah. they didn't have the name approved or like, because that was weird because it was at EA Play as well, um, mm-hmm. which was like EA set that up during E three, and there's like nobody there. That's the other thing, like. There's like a hundred people in the crowd, like because it was that just sounds like a ton right now. But at the time, that was nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's just like the in the influencers um, in there because it's like in their little tent that you can't go in. Uh, so it was really, really weird. Yeah. yeah, but look how it came out. I mm-hmm. still like it's only been what a year, and I want to replay it already. Has it really only been a year? Oh my god. Has it been? Maybe it's been two. No, it's been two because I don't think I was in lockdown when that happened. I remember it was one of the first things. Yeah, 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 definitely. It, it's been like two years. Uh, time is just. I was going to say, I know time is messed up, but not that messed up. Yeah, November 15, 2019. So a year and a half. Um, it was one of the first things that Charlie did for me was edit some of those videos. And they did awful. They did just terribly. Well, 
we can't all be bombastic. Mm-hmm. Um. So chat, we're I mean we're kind of running to the end of the things we want to talk about. So we're going to enter the question and answer portion of the class. Uh, so if you guys have any questions that you'd like us to talk about, we've got about an hour, an hour and a half, whatever, depending on uh, how how interesting it is. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to other news that I wanted to discuss. Um, I wanted to discuss before before we moved on um well there is uh for the twin suns tournament mm -hmm. uh there was the behind the scenes video released for the oh, teaser yes. that went out yeah uh, that born stellar put out mm -hmm. so born stellar his name is Wyatt. he's the uh he's the guy who worked on the the twin suns teaser which was really cool it was um that video i put up um and he put out a behind the scenes thing it was a really interesting look i thought into i'm just opening it now Got nearly a thousand views now. It was a really interesting look into kind of his process and how we worked together and how what he did and stuff. So that was really cool. Um, the other thing I'll say too is we're working on getting some of those mini doges uh, printed up. Yeah. So uh, I'll have one over there. Mm hmm. But I did yeah, see yeah, some questions in chat about this. Uh, my girlfriend did crochet me a uh, an Among Us little plushie there. So for nice. those listening on audio, that's uh, going to be not as interesting to look at because it's uh, you can't transmit video through audio. But where we're going, you don't need eyes. Um, yeah. I can't see because it's only 360. Did you make that link behind you no. as well? Uh, no, that link is uh, official merch that I'm babysitting for my friend who uh, moved to teach in Vietnam. My uh, my office is so messy. I was like, Corey, you've got to like you've got to like cr crop me in. So I'm basically in like a, a very, very small room. Like you can see how close the walls. Behind me. I've got no nothing in here besides my computer and my desk. And I can show you guys on stream. I've got my like my Legends book collection over there. All that work I did to, to crop you out before we started. Now you're just <laughs> fucking giving the tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, I want to talk about it, but you can see my giant. I don't, I don't use this for beer cart tonight. I got my giant uh, Jabba the Hutt mug, which is pretty cool. And yeah. I have uh, a Yoda best uncle mug. So uh... Uh, I've got a Yoda best daddy as well, actually. Huh. Mm -hmm. So I will say my son is watching. He's like really into he's getting into Star Wars. And I will say like you'd think if you hear me saying that, and like my my parents, my sister assume that it's like something with me, you know, like pushing it on him or forcing it. But it, it actually wasn't. He yeah, saw forcing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He saw Ch Chewbacca and uh, Vader were really the two ones that he like really attached to. And then because I will say he did have a baby Yoda. Like we got him. Star Wars stuff. Like he's got a, a little picture of Chewbacca up on his wall. Um and he's got like a, a baby Yoda plushie and he says baby Yoda all the time. But recently he's been like asking to watch Darth Vader. He's like, can I watch Darth Vader? Which means he wants to like put the movies on or whatever. Um, so that's kind of cool. And he's like starting to learn like the characters now. Like he, um, what's he been saying? Like he's been saying like Luke's got a green lightsaber. And I'm like, yep. And he knows like random characters too, like General Grievous. And like, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, you. Mine just blanked. I, I had a whole yeah, sentence in he, my he head. He do be and learning, it just, though. Uh... <laughs> he do be learning. One thing that uh, do you want to talk about the uh, the mod that you're working on? Because uh, it is the kind of sure the the new one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... so for those who don't know, Corey works on mods for the game Star Wars Empire War, and he's got like a bunch. Yeah, so we started out with, uh, well, 15 years ago when it started, we had four that were in the series where it was like one that's Galactic Civil War, one that's Clone mm -hmm. Wars, one, that, one that's post-Endor, and at that point it was one that's set in the Vong War. And we ended up canceling a lot of them and just did the post-Endor one, Thrawn's Revenge. Uh, but over the last few years, we've started to resurrect some of the other projects and add an older public one. Today, we did the official announcement for the Galactic Civil War one coming back. 
Uh, so that is something that is going to be taking up more mm-hmm. of my life over the next little while. So did a teaser for that over on my channel if people want to check that out. But uh, there's going to be some spaceships in it. Uh, we were in talks with the uh, with the MC-75 and the Starhawk. We were able to come <laughs> to uh, come to some terms that we all agreed upon. Uh, still some stuff to get in, like the in final writing and sign. But uh, everyone seems to be on board with the project, and uh, yeah, lots to look forward to there. Mm-hmm. So how's like progress going on there? Like people in chat are asking, like how how far along are you or whatever. It's not super far along, but because on the asset side, so all the 3D models and textures and stuff, there's very little that we need to make for it for at least like a, a functional core of the mod because we've mm. already got like every post and or ship in existence and some that aren't in existence. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple of things like the Death Stars and Vader that you need, but those are also in the base game. So we have at the very least good placeholders for that. Uh, so this is more a, uh, the coding side that needs to be done. We need to make a few more planets, do a lot of the faction government mechanics, do a lot of scenario design. It's that kind of thing. And it'll play mm-hmm. fairly differently. So there's some design on that side as well, but especially with like the tools we've made over the years and the workflow that we've got, the coding side shouldn't take that much time. It's just more, uh, going to be on the design side. So we have a project like Imperial Reign, which is the name of the Galactic Civil War mod that's more on the code and design side. Uh, then there's Revenge Revenge, which takes more on the asset side. So there were some concerns about like, oh, you're announcing this, but the other one isn't out. It's kind of two different parts of the team that'll be working on each thing mm-hmm. simultaneously. Uh, there are obviously some overlapping things, but it, it's a really large team relatively for a modding project so we mm-hmm. we wouldn't do it if we weren't confident in our ability to get everything done mm-hmm. but yeah yeah so, that's interesting i didn't i didn't know that about the two projects i just assumed you were getting way over your head but that's good to know <laughs> i'm not saying we we aren't just that we can get our head back above that water mm-hmm yeah i mean again if people don't like the mods like the the refunds will start coming in and then Oh, there's, there's just it's so hard to issue one because like then you got to track down all the credit card numbers and try mm-hmm. to figure out like how many times can you give back zero dollars a day true um we do have one question that i saw asked a, uh, a couple times about crosshair who is the by the way guys you can ask questions about anything uh probably about star wars books but um about crosshair who's the uh He's the sniper, obviously, based on the name. And people are saying that he... Because if, if you watch the trailer, he's with the, the Bad Batch when they're on Camino, but then he kind of leaves. So do you have any kind of guesses about what, he, what he's going to be up to? He's going to snipe some people. That seems mm-hmm. to be uh, safest bet. Do you think spec. he's going to die, or is he going to defect, or what's going to happen? Like defect from them when they're defecting, or yeah, yeah. Sorry, not defect. I guess rather. Yeah, I mm. I don't know. I feel it would feel kind of weird to like insert a less familiar character to just have them leave. Like I feel like hmm. he's already one of the boys, though. Yeah, I I don't think because that would be one of the first things that happens in the show, right? Order sixty six. Yeah, so it's, it's covering like right up to Order sixty six in season one, right? Yeah, I mean, let's go. Let's just go into kind of the show now. Um, I, I think we might as well spend some time talking about it because, like we said, there's not much else going on in Star Wars right now. Um, let's talk about like what you think, what you're expecting from the first season and from the first 70 minute episode. Like, I figure the first episode is going to be all of that. I think it's going to be Order 66. My guess is going to be that maybe they do commit Order 66. I don't think that's au- au- honestly going to be the. Uh, the kind of pressure point. I think what's going to happen is that because we see them on some world and it looks like they're, you know, being pretty rough with the locals. I think that maybe the clone commandos with a bit more, uh, I don't know if they in can, if they have a bit more creativity and intellectual freedom, but they're certainly like, they're more rebellious. I think they might just decide they don't want to do it. And then my guess is that all within the first episode, they're going to leave Kamino with this new, she looks like a female clone. Maybe, 
Um, yeah, there was most of the speculation I saw was like, is this a Palpatine clone? Did you see any of that? No, I didn't. Yeah, that that's uh, I've seen a few people tweet that out. I don't know if I buy it, but there was some like some chin comparisons and there. There's something there. But OK. Like, I, I feel like having one of them defect from the defection when it seems like it's going to be so early on in the show would be. I don't know, because they have had the few episodes to set them up from season seven, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like I it'd be too early. maybe not defect from the defection, but just, I think one of them is just not going to go, and he's going to come go even more kind of fully Empire. You know what I mean? Maybe. I, I don't know. It just seems like it'd be happening so early that it, it's mm -hmm. hard to... Kind of, like, it's, it doesn't set up the emotional tie between them. Yeah. I don't feel like I got that really from the episodes we've had of them in Clone Wars so far. So it just. I mean, that is also kind of the benefit of a 70 minute episode if that is the way yeah. they decide to go. Like, it would make sense for them to have like some sort of emotional connection to part of the Empire and have that be embodied by one of them staying in there. But like, you can't, you can't break up the skill set, right? Do they, are they going to trade Crosshair for the little girl and then. Is she going to be a sniper? Than she is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So, okay. So where do you see... How do you see the first episode go? Thank you very much, Space, for the donation as well. I did see that. Uh, how do you see the first episode going? And how do you think, like, Ahsoka... If, if Ahsoka's going to tie into it, is she going to tie in? Is Rex going to tie in? Uh, what, what's your expectations there? I hope at least for I the mean, we first know season, uh, we focus a bit less on characters like Rex and Ahsoka. Uh, it's like we need some time to build up those characters, and mm -hmm. and I think that's something that Mandalorian did well. Where going into season two, I was kind of afraid of the cameos, but for the most part, they were not overwhelming and did give the characters that we were introduced mm -hmm. to on the show room to breathe, even if they were like kind of backdoor piloting Ahsoka in season two. But I I don't know. I'm just. I'm not sure what's going to take like the first episode, what's going to take the first season, how long it's going to go with that, how much direct conflict we're going to get in with uh, with the Empire over what period of the first season. So I, it, there's a lot of question marks there for me. Uh, I've also I've been kind of trying not to overly engage with it beyond what I need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's or, smart. For the podcast or for videos that I haven't made. I don't think I, I might have done like an initial trailer reaction, but I haven't done anything since about Bad Batch. Because like it is something where I don't have the highest expectation or like the highest interest. And I don't want to kind of ruin that by uh, or decrease what I do have by mm -hmm. kind of picking apart everything to death. Mm hmm. Someone's got to tell Charlie to move the scheduled stream back by an hour. I'll do it. <laughs> I just got the um, notification that we're going live in half an hour, uh, which is not the case. Charlie, but... you've... I'm gonna, I'll tag him. Charlie... Why isn't... Just one second, guys. You're going to be a part for this. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you, I'm going to use his own language against him. You, nonce. You have the stream set for the wrong time. <laughs> He's probably asleep. I'm going to have to do it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, how about you? What do you, what do you think? Where are we going to be at the end of this season? Um... Uh, it's hard to say because I don't know what length. Sorry, he said 9 p.m. Eastern time. We said, Charlie, Google, current, EST. Um, <laughs> I don't know where we're going to be at the end of the season. I do think this is going to be a longer term show. Like, so I wouldn't be surprised if they spend a season kind of like peddling water. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just focusing on escaping and surviving from the Empire at this point, um, which I'm, I'm cool with. Uh, and then 
I assume like I assume there will be some bigger like we do see that they're looking to maybe not join the rebellion, but they're they're doing something. Um, well, they're a good uh, what twenty years off for the rebellion, unless they just get yeah. killed in the secession world uprisings. That'll be where we finish the show. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean they they, they meet Saw Guerrero, so maybe not like the full scale yeah. rebellion, but they're they definitely like, get involved in. Like that has that was at least confirmed by the mm -hmm. trailer because I don't see that scene where they're with him going with oh you can uh, join the new or get killed with the old or whatever he says I don't see that scene ending with like okay we'll just go die and then do 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 and run yeah full credits yeah yeah um I don't know it, it, I'm that's partially why I'm excited because it is like it is a bit more open than like. The Clone Wars was, for example, where like yeah. they're going to be fighting the Clone Wars most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hold on. But we'll have plenty of a uh, Bad Batch coverage coming up as we get into the season. So, yes. Now we'll move to some of the questions from chat. There was one from Zingbob here. Uh, asking, do y'all think the C. Ruby had potential for more stories, books, comics, or were they more a villain of the week type thing? So, uh, you have any thoughts on that? I I forget which which New Jedi Order book it is that uh, or Heretic. Like refuge. I feel like that amount of content is kind of pushing them to their limit. Like I just like I think with Star Wars, it's hard to make. Um, it's hard to make. Or just any any franchise really. It, it's hard for like just pure evil villains to be interesting. And like the C. Ruby are evil dinosaurs. Yeah, like they do get uh, fleshed out a little bit more in the background, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing where like there's there's any number of uh, of kind of villain of the week, like villains of the week, like that, like C. Ruby, Avitha, where mm -hmm. any of them could have had a bit more room for more stories about them, but at the same time, to get that, you would have been giving up something else. So I do kind of like the idea that there are these groups that uh, mm -hmm. we kind of get the start and end of them and we get like the source book and essential guide references to kind of what goes on in the middle without having to get the nitty gritty of Wedge uh, sending out some pilots to, uh, to fight with the Sibwara on the way to Lueck. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I, I do think there is more room generally for like or there would have been more room like, I'm not saying I'm willing to replace something, but it would have been nice to get more stories set during like the Vong War outside of the books themselves. Like it's kind of weird how little tie in material there was like there's like the invasion. invasion comics. There's a few short stories, but like not a whole lot else. Yeah, but it was already 19 books to start with. So and yeah, but it's it still kind of 19 books, books like about the main characters, you know, um, everyone kind of got their their moment in the sun. It was basically the, yeah. uh, the Avengers time. of Mm -hmm. The Star Wars expanded universe continuity. Mm -hmm. I think there's a short story about Kyle Katarn, or there's something in like the new Central, or there's something in maybe the Central Guide to Warfare about like what Kyle was off doing. Kyle just gets he's... ignored by literally everything until Legacy of the Force. If you were just reading books, you wouldn't know he was around at all. Mm -hmm. And then he gets shivved in the stomach. Yeah, he survives though. So yeah, I remember last time I was reading it, I was like. What the fuck does Kalkatarn die? Because like he, like how do I not remember this? Because he comes close to dying, and it's Jason. So I was like, oh, he's fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jason already killed what? Like Trisina Lobby dies. Mm -hmm. uh, Mara dies. The next mm -hmm. series, Saba fucking chucks Kenth into a hole. <laughs> <laughs> you mean she murders him? <laughs> Forget who that was. Yeah, but somebody on your Discord. Yeah, but yeah, there, there were there was too much turnover in the Jedi Council. They couldn't get rid of Kyle at that point. Mm -hmm. Like Jason was that. on the master track. He could have made council. Oh, yeah, but, for sure. Well, he he didn't want there to be a council anyways, though. So. He was the most famous Jedi after the Vong War, they say. Yeah. Maybe besides Luke, but he's like he's like the golden child. So. He, he starts literally glowing in the fight with yeah. Onimi. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you come back from the fight with, like, Shimra and Onimi, and 
no one else was in the throne room. No one else knows like, oh, it's actually not Supreme Overlord Shimra who was the big bad. Mm. It was Onemi, this court Clown. jester. So yeah. like, cool, you. Yeah, the, there's just not much glory there. So I think they, Luke still would have. Oh yeah, I would have lied. I would have like, yeah, I killed Shimra, and also he had a clone, and I killed them both <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> When, like, Luke and... Luke, isn't it Luke and Jaina who are out there, like, killing, like, a hundred of the Yuzhan Vongs? Like, what are their super warriors called again? The Slayers? The Slayers, yeah. Yeah, I think Jaina's doing, like, massacre on Yuzhan Vong soldiers while Luke duels Shimra and Jason kills on Emmy. <laughs> like, Jaina's better than both of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, here's a question. Can you two collab with other Star Wars YouTubers on a multi-video project about different parts of Star Wars Legends lore and not talk about much on YouTube? This can spice up some interest. I mean, I think the problem is uh, people just aren't really that interested in the, you know, like the parts of Star Wars lore that that kind of video series would, yeah. would um, cover. I mean, like Corey and I do stuff like that. Yeah, generally, like the way people find that kind of stuff, like no one's searching... Uh, C. Ruby. Like, there are people who would, like, search C. Ruby. But as far as a sustainable or an increase mm -hmm. in interest, then usually it's there's some other property people are looking into, then they go down the typical, like, YouTube yeah. rabbit hole of recommendations and everything. So for those kinds of videos to succeed, you usually need uh, relative interest to be high. And, like, that's essentially what my entire channel is, because I almost never do any videos on topics that are uh that are actually of interest to people so it it is a bit no, harder yeah. going that direction it's unless you find like, like the perfect a, way to frame it you gotta like couch the the goods like lore in like a very con consumer friendly way like yeah the like the guy with the biggest balls in star wars legends and it's a video about garm belly bliss or whatever yeah like as far as Collabs with uh, with other creators. That is something like we'd like to get more guests on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, our last episode was supposed to have a guest, but because of all the scheduling issues, that did fall apart. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Alex had to be on Ellen, didn't he? Yeah, and before that, there was the D and D game without us. That because mm -hmm. it was supposed to be him and Templin on Light of the Jedi. Uh, but you think you think people just don't like us? Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Like, other than the people that people know don't like us, I mean. No, yeah, still, yeah, still okay. as confident, yes. You think it's because we hang out with Charlie? No, I think we're unlikable for our own reasons. <laughs> I think that's probably just another reason. Wait, yeah, a lot of those people like Charlie. It is us. Yeah. Fuck. Or don't know Charlie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, a lot of the people who like Charlie, maybe they don't know Charlie well enough. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling him that a bureau, he's gonna cry when he hears that. <laughs> uh, we do have a couple email questions. Maybe we should jump to before we forget them. Sure. Uh, the first one here is from Hunter, who is wondering if we plan to cover the Hand of Thrawn books, and also wants some advice. They've read the Canon and Legends Thrawn trilogy, the Hand of Thrawn books, Outbound Flight, Ascendancy, and Star Wars Allegiance, with choices one on the way. I was curious if we had any suggestions on what they should read next. I'm trying to read everything from after the Battle of Endor. Mm, can you say this again? I, I was thinking uh, something basically, else. <laughs> basically, they read all of Timothy Zahn's books. Like the Thrawn stuff? All of yeah, Timothy all the like Thrawn, Thrawn stuff, Allegiance, choices of one, so all the stuff that's uh, from the from the Xanaverse, and also yeah. if we're going to cover Hand of Thrones. So basically, we do want to cover everything. Uh, anything by Timothy Zahn is pretty good bet that mm -hmm. we'll get to sooner than later, probably. Yeah, but. we're definitely going to do... Thrawn Duology is one of my favorites. I mean, we'll definitely... Again, we've said this before. Uh, if the question is, are you going to cover something? Like, eventually, probably. Um, yeah. It's just... It's a matter of when. But we're, we're not mm -hmm. writing anything off, like, wholesale at this point. Um... Regarding like what to read after Zon, this is or after those Thrawn books. This is another one we've got. We always recommend X Wing, like you said. Yeah. Um, and really, I think the best approach. I mean, you should probably read either the Jedi Academy trilogy or I Jedi. 
don't know, the best approach after that is take a look at the book series and like see which ones are interesting. Like if, if you read the back of uh, the New Rebellion and say that doesn't sound very good, like I'm not going to blame you if you don't crack or open and read her yeah. through. Uh, um, Hunter Dutz mentioned that I don't want to dox him, but that he is a younger reader. So Young Jedi oh, Knights okay. is. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that'd be a great next step there. Yes, uh, yes agreed. So like, that actually is we've been talking about it. it's got some good lore tie-ins and stuff yeah. like because it's kevin j anderson for a lot of them so yeah like when i was just getting into star wars reading uh that was kind of where i went where it was like i had my accidental reading of uh I think destiny's way or star by star then i had uh mm-hmm. Ron trilogy and uh and the young jedi knight stuff so i think it's a yeah. transition that for the age it does make she's sense. at. I, I think I remember reading this email when it was coming in. For the age she's at, like you're not far away from being able to read some of the other stuff, and you could if you want to. But like, it's probably Young Jedi Knights would be good. Um, yeah, but I mean, good on you for for uh, getting so much done at your age. Uh, another hunter has also emailed asking just a quick question how many crimson empire nanny droids do you think Corrin owns or they don't have enough for <laughs> so we've gone from well, he only age appropriate to uh, he goes through him. previous hunter maybe cover your ears for a bit but mm-hmm. look the thing about the fur though is you can buy it anywhere oh, so God. yeah but he's rough on those things but yeah he only owns one at a time but he's owned many but in any given time it's just one there's there's options there. Like we don't it's Corrin's life. We don't need to uh we don't need to judge. We don't need to look up his receipts for the fur when he replaces it. But mm-hmm. it's a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, let I'm gonna put the over under at uh seven point five. What are you where are you going with that? Over, for sure. Over. Okay. I think 7.5 during the Vong War itself. Or alone. Uh, Our next email question, before we get back to the chat questions, comes from Cedric, who says, Hello, Ek and Corey. Who is your favorite Imperial Warlord? Also, if you were a Warlord, what title would you give yourself? High Admiral, Supreme Commander, Honored Overlord, etc. Mm, I like I do just like how the Supreme Warlord or the uh, the Warlords just get more and more ridiculous like so like I think I'd want to be like Supreme Grand Admiral or something or like Grand Admiral of the armies and navies or like just some like something to just up myself over all the other like Grand Admirals that still kind of sounds like it could be in the military uh, hierarchy well it's yours well, I'm just kind of sad that you didn't work effervescent in there, but we're not perfect here. Okay. Uh, so... Regarding um, favorite warlord, yours is Kane, isn't it? No. No. Okay. Who's yours? Who talks Printiak? <laughs> <laughs> Little fairy. He looks like a fairy in Thrones Revenge. Well, it's the color. He's it's like just the. He's got, like, and the one picture, we do need uh, Dark Legion to make a, a full digital painting of it like he did with the other Warlords. But, I don't know uh, if you need that. You think he should just stay as the shitty art quality? Yes. Okay, fair enough. We'll just write we'll that it's it staying like in there by does request. And just like have him be like Pierce Brosnan or something. We did. So for a couple of weeks, we were like working on getting uh, photoshopped images of celebrities and uh, to portray the characters uh, cause like a bunch of mods do that. AOTR does it. Phoenix rising does it a bit, but I've always found mm-hmm. it kind of weird and it makes me kind yeah. of uncomfortable. So we started actually, aside from just the, the full digital paintings, we also used like AI generated faces and then Photoshop those a bit. And mm-hmm. then it's not like, Oh, this is, uh, who is it? John C. Riley playing one of the yeah. grand admirals. Wasn't he, uh, what's his name? The, uh, Death Star designer Levelisk. Yeah. I think he gets used for Levelisk. Then you have like what is it Pierce Brosnan that gets used for uh Yeah. And they have what's his name, the British Darn. guy um from fucking Love Actually. Uh but yeah. And this isn't just like an AOTR thing. This is something that a lot no, of No, no, no. And I'm not saying it's a bad uh, thing either. It is but it, it I does, do laugh when it's like, oh yeah. god, we got Pierce Brosnan commanding, you know, 
trio of super star destroyers. <laughs> is my favorite James Bond, but I don't think I have a favorite James Bond. I don't think I have a James Bond. Mm. But don't tell that to Charlie. Like that's that's enough to be uh, kicked out of your country. I mean, I've never seen Back to the Future. What do you want from me? I listened to like a four hour podcast, multiple four hour podcasts on Back to the Future movies. Never seen them. But they're really good. The first one, at least, is a classic. I, I don't know. I just it's never come up. I, I listen to podcasts alone. I don't watch movies alone. So if I don't have people to watch the movie with, then we can do it for our podcast. Ooh, we're, we're replacing the uh, the WandaVision podcast with the Back to the Future podcast. Yes. All right. Book them. Yep. Book them. Uh, there was, ooh, I guess I did say we'd go back to any chat questions that pop up while we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Amy asked, what's the difference between general and admiral in Star Wars since both lead space fleets? So usually... Do you know the answer to this? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> usually the distinction that gets made when they bother trying to make it a distinction is that general, when it's used for space command gets applied to someone who's primarily involved with Starfighter Command. Uh, mm. So Horton Song. Psalm, uh, Garn Belibus gets sort of put into that, but his is more like a holdover from uh, just on making his comments. Uh, Hera kind of comes in that way, from like Phoenix Leader. Uh, so yeah, like usually it's a meaningless distinction, but when they do try to make it mean something, it's generally... Uh, someone who's commanding primarily starships versus primarily starfighters, even though no it idea. ends up being the exact same thing. I've never yeah. heard of that. Hmm. Yeah, because it, it it is usually so meaningless as to render my explanation there moot, but that does at least get used a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, there you go. Ben asks, working on reading the Legends Library, but Children of the Jedi has thrown the brakes on me. For me, can you talk about the drawbacks of skipping this news fest book? There's none. I mean, what are the, the the only drawbacks is there are like some small details that get carried through. Like there will be characters who are mentioned occasionally, but like read the Wikipedia article and you're doing fine. I read Fate of the Jedi, uh, having not read Children of the Jedi or the rest of the Calista trilogy, and did not feel like I was missing out on anything. Like if there is a Star Wars book you want to skip, really, because Callista's in Fate of the Jedi. Yeah, I. <laughs> if you if you're really feeling, uh, feeling that's a good thing though, because like it, check out whenever they video. bring something like that up, it'll like they'll usually like when Callista comes up in Fate of the Jedi, it's like after the books reintroduced her. Yeah, it's not like you're you're fine. Mm hmm. Like they, there can be some interesting stuff. Maybe if you want to like double or come back around to it, but it's like if there is something, this is supposed to be fun. If you think mm -hmm. something's going to be a slog to get through, or you start it and you're not enjoying it, mm -hmm. there's there's no shame in just putting it down and saying not for me. Nope, you don't owe a book anything. That's like one thing. That's one piece of advice that like seems obvious, but when somebody told me, it kind of changed how I felt about things. Like. You don't owe a book a read through. Like if you start reading a book and you don't jive with it, you don't need to finish it. <laughs> it's like unless you're going to do a podcast it's true. about it. Yeah. Well, like and again, I, I made the suggestion before in the podcast. The uh, audiobooks are a great compromise because they're yeah. literally three and a half hours long. Um, and you can put that on two times speed and make it even funnier. Yeah. No. I mean, a lot of people do listen to audiobooks and like, well, not two times, but one point fifteen or whatever. Um, uh, we have a question from Space is Big. Also, thank you for your donation. He says, have you read through Star Wars Allegiance? I'm working for that now. That is that is one that I actually read recently for the first time in a long time, probably since probably since it came out. Have you read that one, Corey? It's like about the... Uh, it's about Mara. Mara's in it. Yeah. And... I always get it confused with choices of one. Mm -hmm. uh, I can never remember which is which. Uh, but I'm... I'm 99% sure I read it when it first came out, but mm -hmm. it's also a thing where like I've read so many of like the character entries on Wikipedia so much that I'm not even, I'm not 
positive that I actually read the book and don't just know everything from it through mm -hmm. uh, osmosis and other things. But one thing that I'll say so that long. I'm just I'm reading the Wikipedia page right now is the book's a lot more about the stormtroopers than anything yeah. else. Um, because they so it's about like largely about stormtroopers and um, their they they have to defect from the Empire because one of them kills an ISB officer. And as that's happening, it's set. It, I like the time period it's set in because it sets like a few months after or a year, probably a few months after episode four. So it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. And then you've got like Han and Han's trying to leave the rebellion, but it keeps getting, you know, pulled back in. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. So. Yeah. Got your Larones, your Quillers, your. Yeah, Larone's the one that I remember most. I don't think they explicitly joined the Empire of the Hand in that, but uh, Timothy Zahn wrote about, or did mention he wanted to make a another book about them joining the Empire of the Hand. And I think that's what Choices of One is, a uh, novella. Uh, yeah, short they call story themselves them the uh, Hand of Judgment. Yeah. Um, because they start... Because they're like Imperials who think the Empire is actually good, like... Although early on in the book, they're like having to kind of grapple with some of the shit the Empire does. I'm pretty sure really early on they like slaughter a village or something. Yeah. Um, and uh, so afterwards, when they leave the Empire, they're like, well, we're not part of the Empire anymore, but we still want to um, we still want to be authoritarians. Want... <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I read that not long ago. That's one of the books that actually has a full. Uh, a full audiobook for it, because that's how I read it recently. Hmm. So, yeah. uh, we did get another email question from Rowan, who asks, uh, they're wondering if maybe you could upload some of your videos in podcast form. So what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've seen like people try to do that. Like I know Star Wars Explained did that for a while, but I don't think he does anymore. I've seen other YouTubers try to do it. For me, it's just like it's kind of labor intensive um, for like what is a pretty small benefit, I think. Yeah, like, especially with YouTuber. YouTube having uh, pretty decent tools to just like listen and audio only. Mm -hmm. uh, though that I think that is just like if you want to have the screen off and listen to audio yeah. only videos, you do need YouTube premium. But mm -hmm. if there is one subscription service that I pretty much wholeheartedly recommend, it is YouTube premium. Yeah. Because uh, like no ads while still supporting creators, which is something that I care about for obvious reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. But like the the actual functionality of the app that comes with it is super useful like all there are a few podcasts i listen to that are primarily out in video form or i'll like go between watching them in video form and listening to them in audio form and being able to keep my place on youtube while still shutting mm -hmm. off my phone is handy mm -hmm. and it lets you download stuff to listen yeah, that's, to offline that's a big thing like so if you're taking the metro you can download it and yeah. you don't have to worry about internet connection and i'm technically being paid to say that if anyone ever watches one of my videos with it because like you <laughs> Half the money that you're paying for YouTube Premium does go to the the channels that you watch. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you heavily watch one channel, they'll get most of that five dollars. And it is even is though it's a much okay. I didn't I didn't know yeah. that's how it worked. It's distributed based on I think watch time, mm -hmm. uh, but based on some metric. And uh, like even though it's a much smaller portion of the audience that uses YouTube Premium. Uh, that is a much higher portion of any YouTuber's revenue is YouTube Red. Or not YouTube Red anymore, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's higher than revenue, but it's a very solid. But well, proportionally, revenue. like per view. Oh, uh, per view. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great per view. Um, like again, it is an appreciable, appreciable amount of money per view. Mm hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and yeah, like like you said, it's nice because, um, because it does a better job than ad block. Like ad block will always be kind of fucky. Um, yeah, like one of the downsides of doing uh, a 
of doing an audio version of stuff is that, well, not really a downside, but one of the reasons that it's not always worth the time investment that it takes, it would take us to do it is that it's a lot harder to monetize that without getting direct sponsors mm -hmm. for the video uh, mm -hmm. or for the audio at that point, which like isn't prohibitive exactly. Like we essentially don't make money from doing the podcast, but we still do it because we enjoy not it. Not essentially. And, like to, <laughs> and we'd, we'd like to make money off of it someday, but when it's... uh when it's that much more of a time investment when you're putting up yes. like daily videos and then you're trying to do like the video version and the audio version and you're kind of splitting mm -hmm. the interest uh it can be more harmful than anything uh and i try not to let like financial decisions change the way i do the actual content production too much but there is kind of a baseline of like time investment that at least has to be taken into account and that would mm -hmm. be a big part for me why i don't do it yeah, I thought about like uploading to Facebook, which is like something everybody who does like Facebook or a lot of people who do social media recommend you do Facebook just because you get a lot of views and they pay high. But it's just like I just can't be bothered. Like all I got to do is I've already got the uh, video file made. I just can't be bothered to just upload it, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I can't do that, I don't know. Yeah. A everything has an opportunity cost is really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I mean, if there's no more questions, I'm down to have a short episode this week. Um, do we decide uh, what we're doing next week? We did get one more from Joel in email. Oh, okay. If you wanna Sorry. Grab that first. Uh, so Joel asked, do you consider Gideon a warlord or just a member of an Imperial cell, especially considering how quick he was to kill himself at the end of season two of The Mandalorian? For that matter, mm -hmm. in canon, are post under warlords more like rebel cells in the early Dark Times era instead of legit warlords like their legend's cousins? Definitely painted him as a warlord at first, but yeah, we get hints in season two that he might be something a little bit different. Hmm. Because I think they even call him a warlord in season one. Yeah, like there's not there's not really a hard and fast definition of what makes a warlord, really. Uh, it would be I think the primary criteria there would be how independently they're operating. Yeah, generally, and he seems speaking. like not at all now. So yeah, where it seems like he is part of more broadly what is left of the empire especially like not just the post cinder but post jaku uh imperial organization that exists so mm -hmm. whatever's coming out of exegol uh which is like kind of the the hardcore of the hardcore by that point because you've been through two cinders and a complete yeah. tear down of any organizational structure that existed but yeah it's it's scraps at this point yeah total scraps but yeah I think that's uh, I think that's that. We yeah, haven't said what we're doing next week. Bring it too long. Um, so yeah, sorry. What did you say? We're do we do we decide what we're gonna do next week? We didn't decide what we're gonna do, but uh, do you want to get to Planet of Twilight or yeah, I, I always yeah, get the that's last a good thing. idea. Let's get to Planet of Twilight for next week. So send your questions, and then when is Thr when is Thrawn again? Uh, I is that the twenty sixth? Oh, okay, so it's still it's still. A I okay. I I'm definitely making that up. Uh, Thrawn Ascendancy Book 2 release date. You've already got it, right? Yeah. It's April 27th. Okay. Uh, so what day is that? That is, that's a Tuesday. So we could probably cover that on... It. I'll see if I can get it to you as well. That would be a lot easier than reading it in two days. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, so next week, that'll be the 8th. We will cover, it is Planet of Twilight, right? I... I mm -hmm. keep getting the the third book of the trilogy wrong, and no, it's Planet of Twilight. Okay, yeah. uh, it's about the bugs. bugs. We did do hugs. we did do Dark Saber, so that was mm -hmm. the episode before Victory's Price. I, it's been so long, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll do Planet of Twilight. Then we'll see. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out by next time what we're gonna do the time after that. So mm -hmm. we are saying goodbye to the Callista trilogy. So I hope everyone's uh, emotionally prepared for that fan favorite character. That's why they bring her back for Fate of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone, everyone loves themselves a Callista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be great. Well, so we'll see you guys next week. Until then, get your vaccines. Be safe. Don't let anyone cough on you. Anything else you want to add? No, you're gonna end the stream. I actually didn't. Now it's over. Bye bye. All right.